is TB200 still a thing? Uh, I think it's not. It just doesn't really help um, anybody. Um, you know, the other, on the one hand, like one of the reasons I did like it a lot was that it would, um, it would, for people with a, only a small subset of the universe of data, um, it makes, seems to make a lot of sense. Cause like, well, if I only have 400 stocks that I'm submitting on, I only want to be scored on those 400. Um, but actually the people who were like that uh, weren't, didn't tend to be as good for, for actually ha adding value to our fund anyway. Um, and so it just seemed better. I, I like the idea more of like, yes, okay, even if you only have a subset of stocks, like you only have 500 stocks in your universe, um, then submit those but then increase your core by 4x because your vol is going to automatically be lower because you most of your stuff is zero set to 0 0.5 uh, how could you have high vol um so that seemed like a better way forward for that kind of thing uh someone's asking is, is fnc still a thing i mean fnc is a thing <laughs> uh, on um numerized websites you can see it but it it's identical to core on uh, signals core we do only show your fnc core on signals um so you're already staking on fnc on signals um but uh i it's but yeah it does the problem of like at increasing the payouts and this this does seem to solve it doing fnc on the 20 day you can do your own, your feature neutral correlation to your own features pre-neutralized, but because we're being neutralized after the fact, right? We, we are getting FNC. That's still something yeah. I try and, and see someone experiment with is doing feature neutralization to your own features and see if that improves sharp. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I you could do that. Um, I would say you would probably, you probably wouldn't benefit too much from um, like if you had the features, if you had features you think we had, like if you had earnings yield, dividend yield, momentum, then I think to those you might want to neutralize yourself or train to not be too exposed to those. Um, but you might cut, cut your mean too much if you neutralize yourself to truly everything you have. Yeah, I think uh, neutralizing yourself is uh, a bit akin to shooting yourself in the foot on signals. Yeah, there's uh, enough neutralization. It's, it's not the kind of thing that needs it. Like Numerite needs it because you can really have these huge swings on a, if you just build a linear model on that data, you can have some very, very big drawdowns. Um, but signals, it's harder to because we're almost talking about, if you think about every feature we neutralize to, takes away some of the variance of returns. And we're neutralized to 310 features. We're kind of leaving 2%, 3% of the variance of stock market returns left. So we're not really, that's why I always say we're not really modeling returns. We're modeling like some other much smaller quantity that's left over. Any sort of time frame we can expect on the, the core 20 stuff? I've been asking Liam that a lot. <laughs> He's been injecting vaccines and getting sick and not getting it done on time, <laughs> but he's working on it. Uh, it'll come to the website very soon, as in like um, by this Monday, probably so much sooner than that. Um, but we have no timeline for like allowing staking on it. Okay. Or like giving out the actual targets so we can retrain models and things. Those would also be a, a soon thing to happen. Uh, okay. Now we don't see, we don't have a core 20 gate. <laughs> so yeah. we, we want to be careful. Um, but yeah, uh, arbitrage is saying, talking about signals gate. Yeah, so basically uh, we sent out some emails to all the signals users, probably all of you have already read about this and heard about this, but for someone watching in the future, um, we found like a bug that um, affected scoring on signals. And so for some people, it was people who were submitting their live predictions 
with all the historical predictions as well in the same file. And uh, which is what you're supposed to do. It's like what you normally do on Numeri. Um, it's fine to do that. But that caused a bug where we were basically using um, your predictions from previous dates, um, from the historical dates as your live predictions. So like a really bad uh, bug basically made your scores randomized almost uh, if, you, if you were affected by the bug. Um, so very bad type of bug. And um, everybody who was affected, what we did was we paid them uh, if they were affected. Now all the scores on signals are true. They went, we went back in time, fixed everything. And then if you were negatively affected, as in it looked like you earned NMR, but now we're taking it away, um, then you got a deposit for that amount of NMR in your wallet. Um, Signals is all quite small stakes right now. So it wasn't very much NMR we're talking about being affected. It was like a few hundred, um, but it still was, um, was very bad. Um, and we only found it because we were trying to increase the payouts and thinking about different things. And then we kept seeing strange things like signals is helping the hedge fund like a lot. Like it's just like a, a really nice uh, relative return contribution. I actually think soon it might be like half, powering half of Numeri. Um, and so it's very exciting. But then I'm like, why is it looking so good on these back tests and things, but the scores are not looking as good. And then we realized like pretty much in the last four weeks, five weeks, um, especially when people started to use diagnostics more, upload more with historical sets, their performance dropped off. Um, and so, yeah, we, we were kind of scrambling to, to fix it. And I think we've done the best we could to make sure that the data and integrity is as good as it can be. Um, and we have a lot more tests and uh, I, think it's, I think, think it won't happen again. <laughs> You're laughing at me, Jeremy. <laughs> Well, uh, I've heard that so many times in the past, you know, won't happen again. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess in this case, uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, that uh, this was found and rectified. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's been, uh, uh, the Delta has been positive for uh, almost everyone I know, which is good. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, obviously we're on the side of the user, we're, it's our job, like as a, goal of the company to make the payouts better for signals so we don't we don't win by by making bugs uh, <laughs> and so it's uh yeah it's uh, it's good that we have fixed it and it also inspired these new changes like uh possible changes like core 20. Hmm. was that indeed the case uh richard that um like the change or the delta overall was positive Oh yeah. Yeah. Even, yeah. So it's strictly positive payouts, right? We only gave out money to, no one lost money. And then um, from the bug, and then it fixed people's random submissions into their real submissions. And those random submissions turning into real submissions made them more correlated with targets. So those people uh, also benefited. I just wanted to go back to a question Honeycomb had on the, the features. So after there's the 10x features, are we going to be neutralized to all 3,100, 3,200, or still the, the 310? Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's a good question. I mean, the one thing that's, yeah, I mean, that would take out even more of the variance possible to find, right? But um, yeah, one thing that's interesting is how we are using the signals. I can explain. So like, we didn't really know how we would use them. We, would we just add up all the signals on signals and say, this is the signals meta model. Let's give it a little weight. And then here's the Numeri meta model and it has the remaining weight. And we add them together to make the super meta model. Um, and it turns out that there are better, better ways to, to do it. And 
One interesting thing we're finding, which is maybe obvious, but wasn't obvious in the beginning, was if you add all the signals together, um, before neutralizing them individually, you add them all together, and then you neutralize that, um, that's a better model than neutralizing all of them individually and then adding those together. Um, and so, but NMC works the way it works on Numeri, which is like the submission we get, which we consider to be your post neutralized submission is the thing that's generating the MMC. Um, so there's an idea that maybe we should have the MMC be more, yeah, more like how the meta model really is now, because we figured out it's much better to add the pre neutralized, the, the, the unneutralized things, and then neutralize. Um, the other thing we neutralize by is the Numeri meta model itself. If we don't neutralize by that, it's the features aren't capturing all, the, all of what it's doing. So we want to we neutralize by that as well. And that also has a big impact. So um, th this kind of made us start thinking about something called true contribution. Um, which is like, you know, the, the, there's meta model contribution, which is how much you're helping the signals meta model as it is written. But then there's like true contribution, which is like, how much are you helping the hedge fund, like at the very last moment kind of, of, of trading your signal? Uh, like if we didn't have you in the meta models, what would, would we do worse or better? Um, and so it was thinking about this true contribution thing that also, um, put us off the core, the, the top TB200 stuff, because the people with true contribution had these kind of like very strong signals, whether you neutralize them by all the features and numerize entire meta model, they would still be good um, and still be additive. Those were the types of models that, um, we you know need to incentivize because they're they have the highest kind of true contribution, um, but it's um, it's all a kind of work in progress. Uh, the first time we traded signals, I think I mentioned it in the chat, was first of April. Um, we started using the signals in the meta model, and um, since then our confidence in it is getting better and better. Um, and I think we need to, we need to like keep, uh, keep adding a larger and larger weight to it potentially if it keeps doing so well. Um, but, uh, but it was only at that moment that we sort of started understanding these things and seeing them. So I, uh, yeah, I don't have more to say except that I think we're going to think about a pos this possibility of upgrading MMC on signals maybe to be more like true contribution um, uh, or something like that. It's a long winded answer. Um, if we did that, if we, for example, gave you a true contribution that was neutralized to numerize meta model, literally the meta model on the numerize tournament, then do we really need to neutralize by all the features if we're neutralizing by that meta model, which is the best model of all those features. Maybe we don't need to neutralize by as many features. And so when we do release 10 X features, um, maybe we can still, yeah, get away with that. Um, not, not forcing the neutralization to be too severe. Another option is we do like 30% neutral or something like that um, to everything so that it doesn't hurt uh, hurt too much and tends to help. So uh, is it safe to conclude that uh, TB200 is off the table at the moment? I think it is. It was like one of my favorite things, mm -hmm. but I think it's not, it just didn't seem to be on the real data correlated with what we wanted. Um, one thing, one way it might live on is in diagnostics. I still think it's a very useful thing to look at. Um, and they are, because for example, you, th you think, um, let's just say you've, you're, you're playing numerized tournament 
you fully neutralize yourself to all the features and you submit that model. Now you think, well, geez, I've got like the lowest risk model I could possibly have. But if you were to look at your TB200s, they're not neutral to features. It doesn't mean just because your whole vector of submissions are neutral to something, it doesn't mean your extremes are neutral in their portfolios. And I think people learning to get good at making their TBs good will learn deep things about this problem altogether. Um, and, and if we started presenting, what's your TB drawdown? What's your TB uh, on numeri or on signals just as part of diagnostics? I think it's a, a really worthwhile for people to think about, uh, even if you can't stick on it, a bit like FNC on, on numeri. Yeah, I think uh, the, my concern with TB200 was that uh, it takes a really hard problem and makes it even harder. Yeah, it is super hard. Uh, it's much harder than it seems to actually select a portfolio um, instead of just create a signal. Um, and it takes us a lot of work, right? Like we have put years into our optimizer um, that tries to do this, like build small portfolios that are still neutral to things. Um, but it's also a kind of unsolved problem in a lot of ways. Um, to It opens up, I'm sure you've, you, you're thinking this, but like, you know, could you end to end learn the portfolio? Um, and that's a much, uh, a very good question. And we don't know quite how to do that ourselves. Um, and therefore I'd say maybe a good thing to crowdsource. If we don't know how to do it, might as well ask you guys. Oh, you mean end-to-end uh, -end optimized uh, portfolio optimization problem as well? Right, so if you're, if you're being paid on your TB200, how do you- mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's that? effectively what it is, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty mind blowing. What what I liked about the TB two hundred um, idea is that um, for me it felt that it would be more accurate on like an incomplete submission because um, you're only taking you know you only need four hundred good uh, submissions instead of the five thousand ones. Um, did you like? Is this something you 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 looked at? Yeah, but it would, it would, and so exactly. So that's why we liked it. Um, but the problem was, yeah, you you basically you'd rather still be neutralized by us because it makes your variance go up so much. If you're choosing 200 stocks, you could choose very high um, ex feature exposed things. Um, so if you, so it tended to be better. Um, yeah. Uh, to to rob you'd rather have leverage on a feature neutralized submission of 400 stocks than have your 400 stocks um, from your TB 200 because the neutralized one with leverage would still have lower volatility than right. the, that one. Right. So we're kind of running out of time. I want to get to Slido though. I think there are some good questions here. Um, Swish made a good point too. I bet that true contribution computation is going to increase the when scores mean potentially by a lot because you need the, it's like a meta, meta model contribution. First, you need the whatever. Okay. Um, so maybe onto the Slido. The uh, first one is on free and cheap data from different providers. What places seem to have the best and easiest way to gather data? This is sort of a common recurring question. I think like the example scripts are now showing you where, uh, but it's also an open question. We don't know. So hopefully we can keep getting example scripts with different data sources that will prove out which is the best. Uh, Jeremy's asking, Arbitrage mentioned he's not using ML and or targets for his models on signals, what other traditional techniques can people use for ranking on signals? Well, I think he's just using like, he's just submitting a feature basically. There's some features that could be very strong by themselves, 
Um, if you've bought some sentiment data and just by itself, it's like, wow, that's got like a 2% correlation with, with returns. I'm just going to submit that. So that's, that's still the kind of thing you can do if you don't want to do modeling. Yeah, just, just to comment on that, there's no reason to model. If something is associated with return and you can long the top, short the bottom, or vice versa, that's it. You, you've built your portfolio and you can just test that on your own. And that was the premise of it. And I'm now ranked 10 in signals and I have seven missing weeks. So I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> That'd give away my edge. I can't do that. Some deep finance knowledge. It's all public. That's the beauty of academic empirical research. Read the papers, folks. Read the papers. <laughs> my, my hunch is that it's some sort of, I won't spill any secrets here because I don't know anything, but uh, something- we've, we've discussed this on uh, Clubhouse before, so. Yeah, you can yeah. think of momentum, you can think of size, so market cap. We've already talked about dividend yield, but um, yeah. Maybe it's just some kind of like short Bitcoin. <laughs> so. I would sincerely hope that we can't get any alpha on Bitcoin, but I don't know. You can test it empirically. Just submit. You can short Tesla. <laughs> well, if they hold the ten percent of their market cap is tied to Bitcoin, then they should move at some proportion related to Bitcoin price. So, it, the, yeah, in a valuation term, you actually could do that if you knew exactly what their holding was. That's another traditional technique you can use for signals. You can be a fundamental analyst. You can yep. try to read something on all 5,000 stocks and then just rank them all based on how you feel about how they'll do. Maybe it's not the best use of your time, but. Uh... The other great thing is if you have a simple measure, the, the validation data on train and val is out of sample. So you have a lot more time frame to do evaluation on. Yeah, I've been wondering if people are interested in like that kind of signal or if anyone is doing something like that, where like imagine you just, yeah, you just kind of <laughs> went through companies you liked and didn't like based on like their website. You're just like, this company has bad websites. This is my website signal. And you know, you rank all the companies by how good their website is. And then maybe that has alpha in the long run. Yeah, I saw someone on Twitter said they were doing regressions. This is maybe more ML, but it was still just a linear regression on their like, tips and sales data. They were either like working at a restaurant or something. And so there's all, all sorts of stuff. And then the opposite of that question, have any of you used the Fourier transform or a wavelet transform in a signals model with success? No. I, so JRB and I have like talked about thinking about maybe trying something like this where you can use a Fourier transform on time series data and turn it into an image and then use computer vision on that image to to learn the targets I, I don't know i haven't tried that but I, I i'm wondering if the question is inspired by uh, a recent uh, google brain paper on uh, replacing attention in language models uh with fourier transforms apparently that gives very encouraging results yeah so i also I replaced attention with fourier transforms and it had like 90 or 91 percent of the mm -hmm. accuracy yeah, efficiency game. But I, I, I probably categorize this in, uh, in the department of feature engineering. So try, try everything, see what works. Jeremy asked, I, I like the idea of multi-targets week, month that we discussed last time. And JRV and I talk about this a lot. Is that, and now with core 20, that's almost perfect. Like if we have the six minus two day return targets and the 22 minus two day, we can train on them both. Uh, even like 
intermediary times between those would be cool. Are you guys thinking about that still? Yeah, I just it's I don't know how different your signal would be if you, you know if we said oh it's three weeks instead of four or two instead of three. It seems like more than one is and this is what I like there was that I think it was um Dejerhan, I'm not sure how to say it. Uh, he posted this in also a link in the forum post I posted. Um, just looking at the different horizon, there's like it seemed like just from his data that there was like a sweet spot at this one month forecast. Um, and a lot of academic research is around one month forecasts for this reason too. Um, they just don't really have, this, it just seems like fundamental data doesn't really work. You need like order book market data to, to work on, on really short term. Yeah, that's my intuition behind like the multi-targets is you're still ultimately predicting one of the targets and being scored on that target. But in training, you are training on the whole sequence. So you're, it's, it, it's path dependent and you'll probably have a more robust. Yeah, I really am excited about that actually. Like one thing we can't do, right, is take away targets from you. We can't say, okay, you can't look at the old targets anymore. Uh, you, can, you can easily look at them because you have them um, and they're on raw stocks. So I think it will be very interesting to have people build models that are trying to maximize the one week and the one month. Um, or you train on the one month, but you do early stopping based on the one week uh, validation or something like that. And that, that is also, I think you're familiar with this, uh, Jerry, the, the two sigma was two sigma Jane Street competition, I think, on Kaggle. They had like Jane a Street contest, yeah. They had a bunch of targets that were sort of like you would simultaneously look at, um, and that is uh, that is always a good thing to care about, right? Is the path and that the stock took, and so I, there's no doubt that that's going to be helpful in some way. Uh, well, uh, could I say that? This is already within the realm of possibilities. I mean, you, you can do it right now. Yeah. Uh, so just, just build your own targets. Yeah. Yeah, you mean you might want to make one, I mean. Yeah, so the uh, intermediate uh, targets, you build them yourself and the final target will be whatever Numerai provides. Yeah, there's, there's no, it's possible you might find, a, uh, be able to train a model that has positive correlation with our target, but maybe negative with returns overall. And now you probably don't want that. Maybe you should trade a model that's positive with both. Um, and you have returns if you have any price data. So you can do it already. All right, maybe we should wrap it up there. I think we're, we're over time anyway. A lot's going on. We got core 20, we have Signals gate, no more TV 200. Um, arbitrage asking when scores. Later. Soon. 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 Always soon. Um, if, the one, right. if we're saying the one week target is noise, then imagine how much noise is the one day scores. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. All right, cool. Well, thank you everybody for joining. We'll do some more and oh yeah, the proposals. If anybody wants to work on some sort of open source stuff for signals, I think write something up and, and we should definitely get going. Cool. All right, thanks everybody.